called a micro complex probe. It is similar to WDA probe, but it has got a higher resolution. So it has got a best of both. And it has an added advantage that it can be placed nicely in between the ribs. So you get better view. Uh, now, you, uh, it is very unusual to have all these three probes in your institutions. What probe do I to use? It depend on whatever is available. Now, I can't really demand whatever. If you have all the three, I would uh, definitely use all the three because all of them will give little more information than what you would get uh, just before. How do you uh, uh, hold the probe? You hold it perpendicular to the screen. Either the marker will be directed towards the right or towards the head. And which part of the lung you will assess? As per the recommendation, you will use ultrasound like a stethoscope. So wherever you will use a stethoscope, you will put ultrasound probe. Because different parts of the lung will have different pathologies and you will have to identify all pathologies and all different parts of the lung. So what is the picture you get when you put the ultrasound? This is a typical picture. Those of you who already know that ultrasound will be very familiar with this. It is called back ring appearance. Okay. So the, there is one shower here and one shower here. They are rings. That's why they are they're looking uh, black because now ultrasound is passing through them. This is an upper rib and this is a lower rib. And this is the intercostal space. The white line here is the pleura. This is how you will see. Um, there are a few terminologies you have to uh, know, understand. One is called lung sliding, another one is called A line, and another one is called B line. Lung sliding is basically, uh, you know, you see it like a shimmering. It basically represents movement of parietal visible pleura. When it is being expanded in the expansion, when it is moving, you will see it like shimmering. Here, I'm not sure whether you are able to identify. Can you see there is something is moving here? That is called shimmering, and that is the pleural side. That means the parietal and visible pleura are very close to each other. There is no pneumothorax or something which is keeping them apart, and they are moving during inspiration and expiration. Now there are a few other lines called A lines and B lines. A lines is this one. This is a rib, this is a rib, this is the pleura. These are reflection of the pleura at the equidistance. And it is a very normal point. If there is no lung pathology, this is what uh, you will see. The, the reflection of the pleura, you will see at regular intervals until the end of the pleura. And it is completely normal. What is B line? B line is uh, this, it is also called comet sign. It starts from the pleura and it goes to the end of, uh, of the probe. If any pathology is there, like any fluid is there, the A lines will be obliterated and you will start getting B lines. So can you see lines here? This is a real picture. That's the pleura and these are A lines. That's how you will see A line. They are completely normal. And this is how you will see B line. Rib, rib in costal space and this B line you will see, you will see from the pleura and the end of the probe. The A lines, as I said, happens in the normal uh, lung when there is no uh, fluid at all. Okay. When there is fluid, there is reverberation artifact because of air and water interaction, and then you start getting these B lines. I'll try to see, show some examples of B lines. Can you see some B lines here? There are some lines going from there to here, and they are moving at inspiration and expiration. They are B lines. Uh, it is normal to have B lines as well. It depends on how many B lines you are seeing and how widely they are spaced. Around the, okay. <coughs> One more time before that. Isolated B lines is a normal finding, more than seven millimeter apart. Uh, and the low part of the lungs, usually we'll have some B lines as well, and that is also normal. Uh, to be considered abnormal, you should have one of those, these two things. It depends on which probe you're using. If you're using a microcomplex probe, uh, uh, more than three B lines is abnormal. If you're using the vascular probe, the linear probe, more than six B lines in one view is abnormal. What is important is B lines are very sensitive. Before you can see any changes in chest X-ray, you will start seeing changes on the ultrasound in the form of B lines. And it is directly related to the CDRT of the disease. For example, in cardiogenic pulmonary edema, you will have water in the, water, in the lungs. It will lead to B, B line. The more water you have in the lung, the more B lines you will have. And in that way, you know, it is very helpful for you to identify that uh, no, it is a severe form of disease. Another important thing is, when you give a treatment, either you know, diuretics or positive pressure, whatever, as the fluid 
clears from the lung, the number of B lines will come down as well. So it will help you to judge the assessment, the effectiveness of your treatment as well. Uh, in that, it is helpful. So here, the one picture I had shown you before, one or two B lines you are seeing. I think you are able to identify. Here, can you see it's more? Yeah. Because this patient has got more pulmonary edema. And here, if you see, it's like, uh, you know, there are so many uh, B lines, it looks like almost like a sheet, you know? Um, uh, when I, I spoke at the last, uh, this conference last year as well, I was speaking to one of the cardiologists from the USA, and they were saying that they use ultrasound in their OPD clinic, and they use lung ultrasound to titrate their diabetes. So more and more people are using the lung ultrasound in their day-to-day -day clinical management, because it is very, very useful, you know. Uh, you don't have to you know, have any confusion at all. Is the patient has got some edema? Depending on the patient uh, uh, characteristic, yes. Is it very severe? Yes. The, does he need treatment? Yes. And then you can see what is the response of treatment as well. These are the, some of the conditions we can diagnose with uh, in our ultrasound. Pneumothorax, pleural effusion, pneumonia, and other than gestation syndrome. Now, uh, first about pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, as far as ultrasound goes, it's a diagnosis of the negative juice. Okay, and we'll try to explain what we mean by that. For example, you know, we talked about the uh, plural slide, one slide. If you have lung slide, we say the parietal and mesial pleura are close together. If you see that, we can confidently say that in that part of the lung at least, there is no lung surface. So that is the first negative. The next one, this one, can you see a plural slide? There is no plural slide. Yeah, the first one we had a plural slide, so there is no pneumothorax. Here there is no, uh, no plural slide, so this patient may have, depending on the clinical uh, presentation, may have pneumothorax. The next thing is done on a demo. You, you put it in, uh, in between the possible space and give it a demo. Normally, what you will see is this is this is what you will see. It is, this is called seashore side. This is the pleura, and this is the skin and subcutaneous tissue, and this is the lung. This will look like sea, and this is look like shore. Okay, this is a seashore sign, it's a normal sign. It means the patient doesn't have pneumothorax. If the patient has pneumothorax, what happens? The whole thing will look like sea. There is no shore at all. Okay. If, if you see this, this patient most likely has got pneumothorax. The patient uh, is deep in water. The shore is not seen at all. And this is just to compare. You know, this is seashore sign, and this is uh, it's called a uh, barcode sign as well. Now, the other thing is lung point. Can you see something here? The pleural sliding is seen here, and pleural sliding is not seen here. Can you identify that? The lung is coming up to here and going, coming up to here and going. The junction between where the pleura is going and where it is not going is called lung point. All the other for a science I said are negatives. And it says that I was saying it may be pneumothorax, depending on the clinical presentation. Whereas if you find this lung point, it is 100% specific for pneumothorax. You can confidently say that this patient has got a pneumothorax, and you can even quantify the amount of pneumothorax the patient has got, depending on whether the lung point is here, here, or here. That much pneumothorax is there. So this is a very important one if you find it, and it tells you that the patient definitely has got a pneumothorax. And uh, very good if you look for a pneumothorax, what I would say is that because it is near, because of air, it will be the most non-dependent part. So the patient who is slightly in a reclined position, how to put it in the, as apical as possible and as close to the sternum as possible. And uh, you know, if uh, there is good pleural slide there, you don't have to assess the rest of the lung for uh, looking for pneumothorax, because you can confidently say that if a patient has you know, CBC or whatever, and you have a good pleural slide there on that side, you can say that there is no pneumothorax. There is no need to do a chest X-ray as well. What about uh, pleural effusion? I think this I don't have to sell that much. Everyone knows that uh, you know ultrasound uh, uh, for water is very, very, very sensitive. Even uh, 20 ml of water, ultrasound will be able to detect. Whereas chest X-ray, you need 200 to 300 ml. So ultrasound is the best modality to diagnose pleural effusion. And how does it look? This is the picture. You know, uh, This is a diaphragm. This may be spleen or liver, depending on which side you are. This is the collapsed lung. And this thing you see, black thing, is the fluid. This patient has got obviously big pleural effusion, but even if it is a very small pleural effusion, with ultrasound, you will be able to identify. Um, next one is pneumonia. Again, pneumonia, you know, with uh, you know, uh, this thing, uh, ultrasound, you will be able to identify. How it will look? Here, I 
I'm showing you a normal lung. The lung is here, or the liver is here, and it is moving. You, you can not see almost anything. It, it's called a curtain sign. It looks like some curtain is coming and going. Some curtain is coming and going. Because there is no lung pathology. As soon as you have a lung pathology, this is a weakness. Okay. Now you see the liver, a diaphragm, but now you see something like a paper shed appearance. And uh, the, the paper shed is white, brown. They are uh, moving in their shape as well. Another important sign is this. This is called a dynamic air bromogram. Those white things, they are becoming more brighter and less brighter. Can you see that? That is happening because uh, you know, the, uh, pneumonia consolidation uh, is a pathology which happens in the alveolar. The air tubes themselves are painted. So air is still going inside and coming out. It's going inside and coming out. And that air movement causes this whiteness to become brighter and less brighter, brighter. Like your chest X ray, you know, air bromogram is better harmonic of consolidation. In ultrasound, dynamic air bromogram says that this patient definitely has a consolidation. This is useful to differentiate this from collapse. Collapse also might look like this paper shed appearance you might have in uh, you know, collapse as well. But if the patient has consolidation, you will see air bromogram. In collapse, you will not see air bromogram because in a collapse, the whole airway is collapsed. No air is going without. So that's why you won't uh, see a uh, dynamic air bromogram. The other uh, useful sign is, can you see here, this is one wave, this is one wave, this is the pleura. There is some whitish, dirty looking material there. This is called subpleural shedding. It usually means that this patient has a very severe form of pneumonia or ARDS. You know, whenever pneumonia consolidation happens, it happens just around the tube, uh, the airway tube, uh, bronchus or bronchioles itself. Uh, and uh, the periphery or surface of the lung is usually clean. When you have a very severe or like a viral pneumonia, it, from the tube up to the pleura, the whole lung will be affected. And because of that, when you put a vascular probe, just below the pleura, you are seeing that there is a lot of uh, you know, dirty looking material. This is called subpleural shedding. This means patient has a very severe form of pneumonia or ARDS. Now, have you got any evidence that the blood ultrasound is, you know, uh, is good, uh, as we are saying? These are some of the studies. This was done by Daniel Wittgenstein itself. Uh, he showed that for these conditions, cardiac hemorrhagia, COPD, pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, pneumonia, the sensitivity and specificity is very high. Only for pneumonia, the sensitivity is low, but specificity is high for all these disease conditions. According to the study, we had done. And this is another study which showed that uh, you know, uh, you, uh, if you use lung ultrasound and you use cardiac ultrasound, you combine both of them together, it is very, very useful. This is another international evidence-based recommendation for fault of care lung ultrasound. Here, all the specialists all over the world who are experts in lung ultrasound work together and reviewed all the literature which was available at the time of uh, publication, which was 2012, and they came with a series of recommendations. Their plan was to review this every four years. Unfortunately, after 2012, they have not uh, reviewed it. There are not many studies which have come. But what uh, they did was, they were, at that time, there were 320 references. And based on that, they made 73 recommendations. And the recommendations were graded as A, B, and C. Strong level A recommendation is what they say further research is very unlikely to change our confidence in the effect, uh, estimate of effect of accuracy based on the assessment of the studies. And they gave strong level A recommendation for diagnosing four and four conditions based on the evidence. Alveolar interstitial syndrome. Alveolar interstitial syndrome means anything. For example, the RDS or your interstitial lung disease and all those things and the pneumothorax, fluid diffusion, and pneumonia. Now that we are using lung ultrasound, there is more and more use for using ultrasound in other areas as well. Now people have started looking for reduced chest expression, <coughs> weaning failure, people are using lung ultrasound to assess diaphragmatic thickness, recruitment, and tracheostomy. And briefly, <coughs> this is a diaphragmatic excursion. We use a curvilinear probe and we look at the downward shift of the diaphragm. If it is less than one centimeter, it means diaphragmatic excursion is reduced. This question is not going to be available. I think better to wait and uh, uh, direct your treatment towards improving the, the diaphragmatic thickness and then retry again. Now look at other causes like collapse of the lungs, which is causing reduced diaphragmatic thickness and retry. And then you know, try it again. again. This is diaphragmatic thickness. Uh, you can look at the, the vascular or vein linear probe. You can look at the thickness of the diaphragm, and this is how it will look. Can you see? It's getting thicker and thinner, thicker and thinner. That's the diaphragm during the during the respiration, and these are the different types of uh, thickness you will get. Uh, there is a measurement called the thickening fraction, which basically tells you how much the diaphragm is thickening, 
and uh, based on that you can say how much percentage it is taking and this will give an idea uh, whether you are uh, ventilating the patient appropriately uh, are you ventilating too much doing too much support or too less support or just adequate support in this way you will be able to optimize your ventilation a new uh, term has been uh, you know, coined it is called diaphragmatic protective ventilation that can be provided based on uh, you know uh, ultrasound assessment of the diaphragm itself the next one uh, the, uh, now more and more people are using for uh, recruitment lamellar cells like physiotherapists in australia canberra uh, they regularly use lamellar ultrasound to uh, look at which patients need uh, <coughs> physiotherapy in the first place and whether your recruitment maneuvers have helped or not. <laughs> to exam, uh, explain that, uh, can you see there is some whitish thing is coming here? Uh, that is, uh, you know, that is a patient with uh, atelectasis. You do uh, ultrasound and you will see again after the, uh, the recruitment maneuvers are done and see if these are clear. This is much better obviously compared to a chest x-ray because chest x-ray you will do one in three days. You won't do every day. Whereas this one can be done every day or even before and after your intervention. And they have uh, uh, produced some publications to show how it has improved the overall care they provide. The other use is during the tracheostomy itself, you can identify the structures. For example, uh, this is a tripod and these are the tracheal rings. And uh, you can uh, decide you know, where exactly you want to go between the first and second tracheal ring, or second or third, or third and fourth, depending on where exactly blood vessels are. And you can see the blood vessels as well. And if it is in the midline, uh, you know, you know that uh, you cannot put your needle there. You have to find a place where it is not in the midline, and you go. Uh, for example, this patient had a blood vessel which was in the midline; it was going from the top to bottom. This patient, you would not uh, try it for this tracheostomy. You would send for surgery, open surgery, because then they can identify the blood vessel, push it to one side, and do it. And a major catastrophe can be avoided because you have done this before. In summary, lung ultrasound plays a valuable role in the assessment of critically patients. Uh, it can be used for diagnosing following conditions, pneumonia, pneumothorax, pulmonary edema, total effusion, atelectasis, and lots of other conditions uh, as we went through. Uh, it is backed by evidence as we saw those recommendations. Uh, but one thing is important to remember, please don't go only on the ultrasound. You have to look at the patient first, make your clinical diagnosis, and then use ultrasound to you know, support or refute whatever uh, uh, diagnosis you have made or you have a differential diagnosis. Don't use ultrasound on its own. Clinical correlation is paramount. Thank you.